Welcome back for a second episode of Growing Papaya Trees from Seeds. It's day 103. I'm going to apply my first imidacloprid treatment to the main papaya plant, not to the backup plant because I'm going uh, more natural with that. Well, in my recent episode covering my progress with jackfruit, I actually did use fungicide on that too. So uh, perhaps I should have applied insecticide to the backup pot for the backup jackfruit seedlings and the backup papaya seedling as well. But uh, I decided not to. So this is the first time I'm going to use a showering can and make a proper uh, ratio, very a thorough drench application for all of my plants instead of just mixing a tiny bit in a mouthwash bottle or something like that and just giving a very small volume to each plant like I did in the past. So the papaya tree is still very small at this point. The leaves are very glossy and they're sort of like three-pronged, although you can see a two-pronged intermediate. And this should provide for systemic pest resistance for at least a few months, if not an entire uh, upcoming growing season. So it's day 109. You can see these uh, three-prong leaves are getting a little bigger. The newest leaf, um, well, there's leaf primordia as well, but uh, this one that we're looking at in the center, it has five prongs. So the one that's um, in the middle is very long, and the morphology is very interesting. None of these leaves really look exactly the same. So the backup papaya seedling actually has better looking leaves. The coloration is very attractive in this backup plant. And my theory last episode was that it's growing in the shade in the corner of the pot. So due to its positioning, um, the leaves uh, adapted and grew bigger, just like they did with my avocado plant growing in shade. So my fertilizer regimen is uh, one small scoop of miracle Grow and one pinch of crushed vitamin powder every two weeks. And in between, um, halfway, I just uh, do a little bit of watering. And that was true for the summer, but now that it's getting late in the year, I don't have to do that anymore. So it's day 117. You can see the leaves are getting bigger. The stem is nice and thick. It's not like a lot of other plants that uh, have a very hard time standing up on their own. So this is uh, one of the fruit trees that won't cause you any kind of annoyance. It is a very slow grower though, so it takes so long to get to this point. And I'm sure someone's eventually going to come along in the comment section and say something like, I threw a seed, just one seed in dirt outside, and after 100 days it was bigger than a mature redwood tree. So this one, uh, it's doing really well, uh, despite not getting any fertilizer. And the stem also looks very nice. Uh, the green coloration is very attractive on that one. So I think plants that get more sunlight, direct sunlight, have adaptations such as uh, more leaf curling, uh, waxier coating, and that's pretty much what we're seeing here in action. So this is one of those uh, weekends in which I'm just doing a regular tap watering. So I just fill it all the way to the brim and let it drain through. Uh, perhaps at this point it's not as necessary because the root system is no doubt very well established for this plant and probably goes all the way to the bottom. So it's only a matter of time before the pot forms a, a root ball at the bottom. And this backup pot has no drainage. So I can't overwater it and I'm really just going by feel and I, I know it's not really a fair comparison to compare the plants, uh, the backup seedlings in this pot compared to the main pots of this papaya series and also the jackfruit series. So it is what it is. I never intended to keep those things for this long but I decided it would be a good set of controls. So I bought a battery powered backpack sprayer. You won't be hearing much of that squeaky water bottle anymore. It still has its uses, but this is by far a more uh, labor-saving device. It's really fun to play with, actually, and I get to wash the leaves of all my plants and also supply a lot of distilled water to this pot. So 
So if I were to use just tap water and spread all the leaves, there would just be more and more water spots. It would be more unsightly as time goes by. And then uh, I would have no choice but to use distilled water at some point to wash away all those hard water spots for the sake of videography. So it's day 124, doing yet another fertilization. So things are falling into a very predictable routine and the pace of growth is slow but it's very steady. Whenever I find a routine that works I just stick with it until I fail to get the same results or I see some new problems. It's day 126. The leaves are getting more geometrically complicated as time goes on. Uh, this one isn't as broad and fleshy. Uh, the prongs of the leaves aren't as broad and fleshy as the backup plant as you'll see. So uh, the backup plant actually looks more aesthetic, but uh, this one is bigger and it's got more leaves. So my opinion is that this main plant is doing better. It's got a pot all to itself. It's got more sunlight. Now whether or not this uh, plant enjoys uh, more direct sun remains to be seen. Uh, there are some other plants that will burn in direct sunlight. So I'm finding that my avocado and mango are burning very easily from even the weakest of winter sunlight in the morning. So uh, you can see here that the leaves are also becoming more ornate in the backup plant. There are fewer of them. So uh, my feeling is that after a few months, the difference will be pretty big. So this is a uh, microbutanol. On day 130, I decided to apply this fungicide to my plants. This species is very susceptible to damping off during germination. And if you look at all these recommendations, it says mix half a fluid ounce. Uh, some have more uh, going in there in the recipe, but if you go with one half fluid ounce into one gallon of water, that's uh, about one volume per 255 volumes of uh, distilled water. You could use tap water, but uh, again, you would just leave a bunch of water spots on your plant leaves. So um, that's the formula right there. And this is actually what the backpack sprayer is for, applying pesticides. And um, there are manual pump versions of these backpack sprayers, but that's a lot of work. So um, maybe this isn't what every pro uses, but it could certainly uh, be used in commercial landscaping um, on a small scale, of course, not to cover uh, something giant like a fruit orchard. So I'm just going to pour in a gallon of uh, distilled water here, uh, close the lid, shake it up real well, and then spray all my plants. So uh, this thing holds up to four gallons, and the battery lasts for quite a while. I could spray, I don't know, perhaps uh, 20 gallons or something before the battery would run out. Uh, well, maybe it's less, but uh, it's just way more efficient than trying to spray anything by hand. And of course you have to be a little bit more careful when you're spraying chemicals like this and uh, spray it onto your own skin or inhale it or anything like that. So um, yeah, I'm just dowsing all my plant leaves and making sure that uh, they'll get that fungicide effect. And hopefully, um, because these were very susceptible to damping off in the seedling phase, that I was thinking Maybe this will confer some a great benefit because it certainly did for my pomegranate tree and it pretty much uh, removed the breaks on the growth and that really took off after I sprayed this microbutanol, which uh, my first treatments I actually just used a small handheld spray bottle that cost about a dollar or something because I didn't want to uh, um, risk it and just not be able to use like a big spray bottle that was nice for some uh, other purposes later on. So as you can see the leaf structure is very ornate and the leaves are really curled um, compared to uh, what they were before. So I'm a little bit worried that maybe this is sort of dehydrated in the sense that the, the miracle Grow uh, salt is building up in the soil. So I'm very tempted to do a big uh, tap water flush out like I did with my avocado series um, going back a few months uh, well every few months I, I do it for the avocado and many of my other plants as well 
Yeah, it's just a lot of uh, routine watering and fertilizing every two weeks. And other than that, uh, this plant has been very easy to care for. It's uh, on a balcony. I'm on the second floor, so perhaps I'm a little more insulated from the bugs. So I'm watering this backup pot with distilled water instead of tap water because uh, I don't want to salt the earth, so to speak, by using tap water because San Diego County tap water is among the hardest in the nation. So the total dissolved solids, as they like to say, is very high. Um, it's uh, among the highest in the nation. So if you keep pouring gallons of water in there, um, it's just going to accumulate a lot of minerals. And since those are dissolvable, they can compete with a plant in pulling water. So eventually your plants won't be able to pull water into their uh, root systems. So I'm just going to use some distilled water. And uh, after a few months, uh, you know, after it's very obvious that these have lagged behind too much compared to the ones in the main pot that have had fertilizer all this time, then I can probably give them away. So it's day 144. Um, again, the new leaves are very curly, but they seem to uncurl fine. There's no signs of leaf burn, uh, no signs of fertilizer burn. So I'm not sure that uh, fertilizer is a problem. You can see a little bit of brown spots uh, on those lower leaves. So those are like practically useless at this point and if the plant sheds them it's it's really no loss. Um, so the foliage uh, that's higher on the trunk will eventually get bigger and bigger I'm thinking until this plant acquires uh, leaves that are just giant in size. Probably a lot bigger than my avocado leaves actually. So the backup seedling has a brown spot on one of its earliest uh, true leaves lower on the trunk and actually it's the main seedling that has uh, those early starter leaves not looking so hot. I think it's just further along in its development and this will be the first one to shed all of those uh, tiny little leaves that aren't so complex that have one, two or three prongs. Well, the ones that only have one, so to speak, they're really just uh, sort of oval-shaped uh, leaves that don't really have any interesting features. So you can see a lot of curling going on. Uh, the plant is otherwise doing fine. The stem thickness to leaf size ratio is just amazing in this species. It doesn't have all the problems that the other fruit trees have with all this phototropism and falling over every nanosecond. So uh, papaya seedlings start off very slow. So the, the differences between this uh, unnourished one versus the nourished one in the main pot are uh, not very obvious compared to the jackfruit series. So when I was watering earlier with a sprayer, uh, you may have noticed, and I covered this in my jackfruit uh, second episode as well, that the three backup jackfruit seedlings have a lot more leaf defects and they all uh, look a lot more yellow than the two uh, main pot seedlings that I've chosen to continue the series with. My papaya seedlings are now five months old to end this second episode. I expect in terms of future growth that the main seedling will be almost tall enough for me to call it a sapling by the end of the year mark. I know it's only a few inches tall but the growth should really accelerate from here already seen quite the acceleration curve um, unlike some other plants that are just kind of uh, slow and steady um, such as the jackfruit I think that initial burst out of the seed for the jackfruit was really fast but uh, they have slowed down a bit since then and it's just been constant growth but the papaya looks like it's one of those things that's just going to explode just like the sweet wormwood series where in uh, the sweet wormwood seedlings were doing uh, next to nothing for the first 50 days and then that became uh, the biggest most robust plant I ever had uh, grown on my balcony in the old apartment. So um, at least the trunk for this thing should be very impressive and even if it's not three feet tall uh, these leaves uh, as the plant grows taller will be really really impressive I'm thinking and will give a more tropical appearance to my balcony. 
Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the second episode. I think by the end of the third episode, you're going to see uh, a much bigger plant and the thumbnail picture is just going to be much more impressive than what you see here today. So uh, please stay tuned to my YouTube channel for further updates. Thanks for watching.